Why is it important that architects think about conserving rather than rebuilding? Um, well, I suppose it's obviously uh, important because it's um, uh, a sensible use of energy, or the, or the embedded energy in buildings that um, are already there. Um, and then it can also be because the, um, the fabric of the city is destroyed if you start taking too many buildings down, as we've seen um, what happened after the war and so on. Um, but I don't think it's uh, the be all and end all. I think, I think if we take Manchester as a very good example, we've got a reasonably intact uh, Victorian city and the, uh, the phrase, the Manchester's phrase, original, modern, sums it up that um, we've always been forward thinking and um, um, I suppose the job that uh, we've, we've been doing over the last uh, 30 odd years is um, conserving the parts of the, the fabric of the city which is worth conserving and um, putting in between that uh, good contemporary architecture. Uh, it's it's possible to be totally uh, of now, but um, recognise the context um, all the time. An exception to that, and a deliberate exception to that, was Cheetah School of Music, um, because this is a this is a building of, the, in my opinion, the stature of a town hall or a church, and uh, um, and therefore it's it's okay for it to be its own thing. It doesn't have to say, oh, well, everything around here is three stories and everything's got vertical windows and, and you know, and, uh, uh, typical Georgian Strait Victorian punched hole kind of thing. Um, this, is, this is of that stature and is allowed to have its own language. Um, even so, I think the language we developed for it fits, works. But it's you know it's a completely horizontal um, uh, expression rather than vertical expression, which is typical of the city. With with Chetham School of Music, it sits next to one of Manchester's only existing medieval sites. Mm -hmm. How did you approach this project with, with that in mind? Um, well, I think we um, we did as I was saying before, but that we we felt that we had to acknowledge context. We had this amazingly robust location um, in, in that Cheetham stands on a rocky outcrop. You can't see all of it because, um, because some of it's been covered over in Victorian times, but it basically stands on this great big rocky outcrop that goes down to the two rivers um, below and it is, you know, it's made of stone and then all around it is, we've got uh, very, very robust um, Victorian buildings and um, <clears throat> so I think rather than picking up on any particular clues that the buildings gave, it was more about this robustness and, and um, two words, two a word and a phrase um, informed us and one was carved out of the solid, that's, that's what we, um, we, uh, we used as a, as a guiding thing and the other was monastic because um, it, it, you know, it's the, one of the best schools of music in the world, it's about very serious um, study. Um, it has a low population for a building of that size, it only has 300 pupils. Um, so in, in, in it, there's another sort of analogy with uh, uh, the monastery. Um, so it, as I say, rather than it being, um, oh, the, the medieval building's got stone mullions or, or whatever, it was more um, the spirit of, uh, of the place. Do you think the UK has the technology and the skills to excel in conservation architecture? Oh, I think so, yes. I think it's, uh, uh, it's a great tradition of, um, of uh, knowledge of how old buildings are made and we don't find any, um, well, not that we do conservation all the time, but when we do, we don't find any difficulty in getting the right kind of um, craftsman to do it. And in fact, I think in our uh, in our general work, we um, we've formed relationships with a number of craftsmen around Greater Manchester that um, we go back to very often. Um, 
great metal workers and great cabinet makers and so on, um, who you know we use as uh, in our contemporary work. In 1998, Key Bar in Castlefield was shortlisted for the Sterling Prize mm -hmm. and then was sadly demolished in 2007. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you how transient do you think architecture is? Um, well, uh, I am um, <laughs> very upset about that because I didn't think that was a transient piece. Um, it, uh, although it was, you know, it was um, a building about, it was a fun palace, you know, um, and it still um, was a, a very intense piece of work um, that had, had a lot of challenges about its location and um, in fact it's, there's part of it there and that, um, in that case um, uh, and I'm very sad to that it had such a short life and I know a lot of other people are as well because they keep on reminding me uh, we, have, we were actually uh, shortlisted with uh, Cheetahs as well, you know, we were in the we, apparently we were um, one outside the six that are, are now on the shortlist, uh, on the final shortlist. You know, we were in the in the one before that, and I think the main well, I was told the main reason was because the concert hall wasn't finished inside the building um, because they didn't have the funds for it. So, you know, there's a kind of a question mark about should you should you have a, a, a an unfinished building on the study on the study list. I think there's no question that you, you are an award-winning architect. So how would you, how do you become an award-winning architect? Okay, well, uh, I, I'd say, uh, I mean, I, I was fortunate to go to the Liverpool School of Architecture in the 1960s when it was a, um, I don't know really what it's like now, but it was a fabulous school at the time. Um, I had, uh, I got a place at the AA and at Liverpool, and I lived in London. And I made the decision um, to go away to university. It was was uh, I'd been told, you know, that those two schools were pretty much on a par. You don't know before you start, do you? Uh, um, so I went to Liverpool, and it was a great school. Um, and um, where there was an enormous amount of competition in the particular um, final year. Big presentations, you know, was the was the order of the day. I still is in some places. Um, I, I got a first class honours degree, and 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 then I um, worked at BDP uh, for a few years, and and um, I encountered what every student encounters in real life, and that is um, that most people around you are trying to stop you from doing what you want to do. Building control says you can't do that. The planners say you can't do that. Sometimes the client says you can't do that, and um, or the QS says it's too expensive. So, you know, it'd be very easy after about six months to say, oh, "I'm giving up on this. I'll just do what anybody wants me to do." And unfortunately, you see that in our profession around the country, um, a kind of mediocre um, buildings which don't let the water in, don't fall over but have made no contribution to the built environment. And I think that's the result of people discovering that, the, that it's hard out there to, uh, you know, not, not to be a prima donna and say, I want, I'm going to do it like this, but um, to say if the building control says something, you know, you, you find a way around it. And if, if the uh, QS says something, you find a way around it because you, you want it to be on budget. And you, but I think all those people that meddle tend to start watering down the idea and it's having the conviction to say um, if, if we do that this is going to start to fall to pieces in fact we should go back to there and start again if you want me to do that you know so um, and I don't think that's anything really outstanding it's just the courage of your convictions and um, finding ways around the problems and doing it like you were doing it when you were at university, with the spirit that you had when you were at university, with the freedom that you had when you, when you were there. Um, and, uh, uh, and we're stuck by that. That's what we do now. And, it's, you know, we, we work at it until it's good enough. And finally, really, just wanted to ask you who you're influenced by as a designer. Um, I'd say, um, it's not, I'm not influenced by one, but 
Uh, one that a lot of architects are influenced, uh, like to, to cite is uh, Carlo Scarpa. Uh, and I, I perhaps have a bit more of a reason than some people, and that, that is that um, I did make this very conscious decision to, to stay in Manchester. I'm, I'm from London, um, and I liked the challenge of this, the problem, problems this city had. Um, and I've been fortunate to be working right from when it was a hellhole to, to what it is now. Um, and I also like the idea of, um, of kind of really understanding the grain of a place, um, uh, rather than spreading out, you know, and going and doing work in Abu Dhabi and, and Hong Kong and wherever. Um, and that's how I like and how I relate to Carlo Scarpa. He only worked in for Netto and uh, in a quite well, he did one, one or two buildings elsewhere, but mainly all of his work was in this quite small area, and it was all about really understanding the grain of the place and the grain of the buildings that he was working with, uh, and um, used craft in a, a contemporary way. Um, so that I like those aspects of, of his work. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah.